here's the questions. Uh, we have lines wide open, and you need to chime in right now because it's time for you and I to react. Um, I watched it, and I heard no policy. Did you hear any new policy, Producer Garrett? I heard nothing new. In fact, uh, the, uh, the uh, reporter we had on last night, uh, Savannah Hernandez from Turning Point USA, and uh, the post millennial, she was saying this is exactly what Kamala has said, the exact same portions of speeches she's already said before. That doesn't surprise me because she's always been a very uh, fake uh, candidate, a very fake uh, politician, hiring child actors when she talks about space, um, staging people at a diner uh, the other day in rural Pennsylvania, throwing out the actual diners. A very, um, that's kind of how she rolls. Um, she talked about being for the people. She talked about, uh, uh, a new way forward. Well, hasn't she been in charge for four years with Joe? So a new way forward, you mean you're going to take us the opposite of what you've been doing for four years? She's trying to act like Trump has been the president uh, for the past four years. She has. She's been the vice president. She's been in charge. She's been handled many major uh, important things that she apparently has failed at or chose to fail at. Um, either incompetent or chooses to be um, to be uh, to not do her job. Um, she said she'll fight it. She fought against the cartels. Well, that's a lie. And I'll be sharing with you some of the details that Cochise County uh, Border Sheriff said today when uh, Trump was down there. Uh, she attacked Trump, said he was found guilty of, uh, you know, fraud in New York, uh, that he was uh, found liable for sex abuse in January 6. She lied about Trump having a nationwide abortion ban. He has been over the top repetitively clear that he would never do an abortion ban uh, nationwide. He only is for the states deciding and never for anything else. He's made that abundantly clear. She lied about Project 2025. When we come back, actually, in the, in three minutes at uh, 17 after the hour, I'm going to play for you CNN this morning saying that is a false, it is a lie. Uh, and they're calling it out directly this morning on their uh, truth, uh, truth detector uh, segment or whatever with their... Uh, with their, uh, what's he called? Their CNN fact checker comes on and says that's a lie. Uh, so she repeated that lie. Um, she talked about being a prosecutor, as a prosecutor, this or that. Uh, however, her record of a prosecutor is horrible, including bailing out people who have raped and murdered after she bailed them out. Um, to, well, you know what she was to me? It, it's the Barbie candidacy continued. She's candy, handing out candy, making you feel joy with no policy whatsoever. She's Barbie. She literally is the Barbie candidate. Now, I'm going to ask you some questions here. I want you to think about this and chime in. We have two lines open. Get on the phone. It's time for us to talk. Uh, uh, Did you hear any policy tonight from Kamala? What's new that she shared with you tonight? What is brand new that she shared with you tonight? Is there anything new about her policies that she shared with you? Because all we know is her record up till today, which is uh, Marxist, socialist, leftist, pro-criminal, anti-cop. Um, and so uh, did you hear anything different than the past four years? I heard the same over the last four years. She's going to continue the last, the last four years with high inflation, high government spending. Um, and then did you hear anything in her speech that's going to stop inflation? Did you hear her talk about her big policy she debuted uh, six days ago where she's going to do grocery price fixing? How serious? Here's a big question you have to answer uh, for me. How serious of a threat do you think she is to Trump? How serious of a threat do you think she is to Trump? And I'm not going to lie to you. She's a threat. She's a real threat because she has got the blessing of Barack Obama. You are, I sprinkle my magic dust on you. You have no policies. Um, you're going to be a continuation of uh, the, a fourth term of the Barack Obama administration. That's what Joe is. This will be his fi- fourth term, and I'm not just saying that. Uh, but she has no policy for you. But she is a serious threat to us because the media is is going to hump her leg for the next uh, 90 days uh, and hide for her and not ask her questions about her policy. Um, she said, show them who you are. Uh, you know, I believe in showing you who I am. Well, we've seen who she is, haven't we? Over the past 30 years of how she's run as a politician, it's been the opposite of what she wants us to believe now. Those questions and ne- uh, more coming up in three minutes at uh, 1017. Adam and Fairfield, you're first out of the box. We have two lines open. Get on board. We're going to go boom, boom, boom. Next, uh, at, uh, at uh, 17 after the hour on the Chris Croc Show, News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 933 wbap is our number. 800-288-9227. Two lines open. Get on the horn. loud but not only said him out loud he wrote a book about it what's it called project 2025 
That is false. Trump did not write Project 2025, the project's big policy document published by the Heritage Foundation think tank, lists dozens of people as authors, editors, contributors. Donald Trump is not among them. A Project 2025 spokesman told me tonight no candidate was involved with the drafting of the document. Now, it is fair to say Trump has extensive ties to Project 2025, and CNN has reported that more than half of those authors, editors, and contributors worked at some point in his administration. But that's different than saying Trump actually wrote it. Now, let's yeah, so that's CNN's fact checker saying uh, yesterday during the convention that they were lying. That was two different delegates. I could play the whole thing, but it's a minute 17. I don't want to do that. Kamala repeated that lie again tonight, Project 2025, Trump. She also uh, repeated many lies. But here's the thing. She gave a speech that Joe Biden would have given, the same speech Joe Biden would have given for uh, his reelection campaign to the DNC of this year if he, was gonna, if he, never, if he wasn't uh, dethroned by her party, uh, by Kamala and Obama and Pelosi. Uh, so she gave the same speech Joe would have given, but she actually gave it in a, in a way that Joe could never give because he's just too old and frail and, and far gone. But I didn't hear anything new. I heard no new policy. And this is a continuation of the Biden administration. So what did you hear? Did you hear any new policy? Uh, What's new that she shared tonight? Uh, Did you hear anything different than the past four years of Joe Biden's policies and Kamala's policies? Anything to stop inflation or grocery prices? Uh, How serious of a threat is she to Trump? I think she is a serious threat, though. Um, She said, show us who show them who you are. But has she shown us who she is other than the past 30 years of her policies and her her actions? Uh, She has. And she's shown me to be the opposite of who she wants us to think she is. Adam in Fairfield, you on WBAP. How'd she do? Chris, you know, you know, when it comes to acting, I think she she, she could have made on you know, all my children. You know, uh, whoever was typing in the teleprompter did a really great job for. Her. Uh, I didn't know she could put that many sentences together. One well, she, she's that, reading a script, and so Joe could do that if he wasn't so old and frail. You know what I'm yeah, saying? I, and much of what she said was in her all of her previous speeches. Apparently, there's nothing new in there. She said for the most part. Did. Have you ever heard of her doing any kind of negotiating with any other world leaders? Because she says she has. Yes, she has for the border, and we saw the results. Yes, so whenever I think about that, I think about this morning's show where the the, uh, employment numbers were extremely skewed. Yes, she told us the jobs are incredible, but they're 818,000 less uh, in the past year uh, up to the spring. Uh, so with those revisions, that's 84,000 jobs less per month over for a year. Mm-hmm. And her border policy that she's talking about putting back into effect would just barely, barely restrict a few people from coming no, up. No, no, the, the border policy, she, she says she's going to try to push in law if she gets elected, it would allow in 1.8 million illegals plus uh, another 600,000 that she would continue to fly in directly, like she and Joe have been doing for four years. So that would be uh, 2.4 million illegals she would still bring in per year, which is uh, which is like, uh, what is that? Uh, t- like uh, I don't, like around 10, 10, or 10 to 11 million illegals in four years. I got a roll, but did you hear anything new? And how much of a threat is she? No, she's not a threat. She's scared to death, man. She's shaking in them high heels. I don't think so, brother. I think she's a real threat if people vote for somebody based on a feeling but no policies whatsoever. You will have four more years of Biden. That's what I heard. Two lines open. Joe in Mid-Cities, Jim in Fort Worth, James in Fort Worth. You're next. Two lines open, 800-288-WBAP, 800-288-9227. More fact-checking and more reaction from you and me next on the Chris Crock Show, News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. We'll uh, continue at 10.33, and I'll have more fact checking for you in real time and more audio to play for you coming up on the Chris Crock show at 1036 WBAP. And so on behalf of the people, I accept your nomination to be president of the United States. My mother was a brilliant five foot tall brown woman with an accent. Consider not only the chaos and calamity when he was in office, but also the gravity of what has happened since he lost the last election. President Biden and I are working around the clock. 
because now is the time to get a hostage deal and a ceasefire deal done. After decades in law enforcement, I know the importance of safety and security, especially at our border. <laughs> That's my favorite. Woo! Okay, now. Here's what she did do. She was focused and she delivered a good speech. Trump's was like two or three times or four times the length and it was rambling towards the last half. Um, So she's disciplined, she's focused, but she offered no policy, nothing new, and it's a continuation of of the last four years. Did you hear any policy? What's new that you heard her share tonight? Uh, did you hear anything different than the past four years of what she's done with Joe? And um, she even attached herself at the hip with Joe, which was uh, good for us, bad for them. But uh, and was there? Did you, did you hear anything tonight about stopping inflation or grocery prices? How serious? And here's the big one too. How serious of a threat is she to Trump? She's a very serious threat because if he's not disciplined, if he's not focused, she can win. And that's very scary. It's uh, candy. The whole speech was candy with no policy. Barbie. Uh, James in Fort Worth. Actually, we go first to Joe in the Mid-Cities. Joe, you are on WBAP. Hello, Joe. Hello, Chris. I like to listen to the speeches on the radio. We're not watching TV, so I can not see hand motions and facial gestures. Let me tell you, she she fell short. Yeah, because it's a, it's a whole different spiel for me mm-hmm. uh, being a DJ. Just anyway, audio. So so so. Uh, here, here's the thing. Isn't it ironic? She says she traveled the United States for two years talking to women, but in two years, she never traveled to the border. Did you, Kamala? No. Okay. And, and Democrats always complain that the Republicans never gave the middle class a tax cut, but when they're in charge and they, and they can do it, they don't do it only when they're running for office. So, so here's that same thing. She repeated, I'm going to give a tax cut, tax cut. And, and and she is dangerous because the Trump hate is real. Yes. And like you said, okay, and it, even if Trump was focused, we might have a little chance. But, dude, you could put anybody in there. And, and, here, and here's the thing. The chaos and the calamity was not caused by Trump. It was caused by Democrats, liberal media that kept poking and poking and poking that caused the chaos and the calamity. And one last thing, and I'm serious about this. The, did she have a, a glass of wine before she went out there? It Why? was so slurry and just, and again, I, I noticed this by, by just listening on the radio and not watching. It was real slow and just dragged out. For a, for a while, I thought the audio was just kind of bad. Mm. It was very, um, um, I just took a hit, and I'm serious about this. I just drank a glass of wine or two. It was very, very slow. In my opinion. Okay. Very interesting on that. Okay, but you do see her as a threat, and you think that Trump hate is real enough that, you know, uh, that could stop it. Now, I heard Trump—I appreciate your call, by the way, Joe. Thank you for your great call. We have three lines open, 800-288-WBAP, 800-288-9227. Uh, chime in right now. Um, you know, I, I hear what you're saying on, on some of this, and I agree that Trump's, uh, you know, Trump can lose this because of the hatred and the negative stuff that he brings on on his side of the ticket uh, with who he is. Um, he, I just heard him uh, on uh, Fox News. He did a live interview after the first three, four, five minutes of reaction on the panel there, and he called and he did a good job. He said she's been in charge for the last four years. I heard nothing new, and she's saying she's going to do all these things but he's like why isn't she doing them right now why didn't she do them four years ago why is, why is she gonna do it now when she could have done it so that's good that's what you need to do he's starting to learn but he he always is his own worst enemy and all we can do is hope that he'll do it right and hope that the um the pressure will uh, be on her to flush out who, who she is and, and what her policies are which we already know they're they're terrible but uh, 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227. Hey, uh, Greg Abbott just uh, tweeting moments ago, Democrats just anointed a California liberal. She's been a disaster for our country. It will only get worse if she's elected president. And she's right. He's right. She's a California liberal. I mean, that, that's, that's just who she is. I mean, I can play a, a clip after clip. You know, she's for giving illegals health care. She's for not letting any illegal be illegal. She wants to give them all citizenship and voting rights and free health care. Uh, it goes on and on and on. Um, and she, you know, she bails out people that would rape and kill people uh, for being rioters in the St. George Floyd. Blessed be his name, riots. 
Um, anyway, let's go to Jim in Fort Worth. Jim, hello, WBAP. What do you got? Hello, Chris. Can you hear me clear? Yeah. Two quick points. One, Kamala's speech. I had to turn it off. She had that elementary school nasally Toronto. Yeah, nasally. Oh. <laughs> no. Here's part of it. When she went in as a prosecutor, I prosecute on on behalf of the people. Guess what? Every other state does that. Texas puts in the people of the state of Texas against this criminal. As you know, and I know, in Atlanta, Georgia, the people of Georgia, against this criminal. So that's nothing new, Miss Elementary School teacher. Now my concern. I know you from Atlanta, okay? Oh, when I was at uh, WSB? Mm Mm-hmm. I was SB2 doing sports radio, but we're not talking about that today. My concern is not Kamala as a candidate. My concern is I clean up voter rolls in multiple states. Georgia still has 43,000 illegal immigrants, aliens, whatever, registered to vote. I also do polling. 10%. I've said they voted in the past in federal elections and plan on voting again. That's my concern. Corruption in the voter counting system. You know, what I like to share with you is the incredibly successful governor of uh, Georgia, uh, Governor Kemp, who Trump was foolishly attacking uh, two, three, four weeks ago. Tonight, he actually uh, tweeted out a thank you to Kemp. And in fact, I'll read his tweet. This is good because he's finally learning his lesson because he still has time to fix things up that he's destroyed by being foolish uh, in some of these things. But he tweeted out a, a, a tweet to Governor Kemp tonight. And I'll, I got to pull it up on my Twitter feed here. And people need to follow me on Twitter at Chris Crockshaw. That's at Chris Crockshaw. Rock Show, C-H-R-I-S-K-R-O-K. Here it is. Thank you, Governor Brian Kemp. This is one hour ago. For all of your help and support in Georgia, where a win is so important to the success of our party and most importantly, our count, our country, I look forward to working with you, your team, and all my friends in Georgia to help make America great again. That's important because he has a ground game that is insane, and he's finally uh, put a, pulled his head out of, out of his rear and uh, is going to take that help. So that's good. Uh, I appreciate your call, Jim, and I'm grateful that you still listen to me from Back when I was at the WSB in, in Atlanta, uh, working with Herman Cain and Neil Bortz uh, and the great Clark Howard. All right. Um, we have uh, we got we don't have time for James. OK, James and Fort Worth, you are next right out of the box. Do not go anywhere. I want to hear from you, too. Do you did you hear any policy from Kamala tonight? What's new that she shared? Did you hear anything different than the past four years? Uh, what she's doing? It, literally, I heard a, a continuation of the uh, the. Uh, Four, it'll be the fourth term of Obama, the third term being right now. And um, that's why he put her in. And he's he's been besties with her for like 30, 25, 30 years before the, any of them were like national hits. Um, so he's installed her. And that's that's what the Democrat Party wants to do. That's what they do. But I hear the same continuation in the last four years. Did you hear anything new? What's new that you thought she shared tonight? Anything new? I didn't hear anything. Uh, did you hear anything different than the past four years? Or is it the same next of the next, last four years going to be the next four years? And do you think you heard anything there to stop inflation or grocery prices? I didn't. Here's a big one for you. How serious of a threat do you think Kamala is to Trump? Because I think she presented well tonight, and that's a serious threat to Trump. No policies. Still none yet. None on her website yet. But uh, that's a Barbie presidency, but it's still a serious threat to Trump because he is a rough candidate with a lot of people in this country. Um, So that I want to hear from you next. And one more I want to throw in. She said, I was told, show them who you are. Well, uh, my question is, who has she shown herself to be to you? Her 30 years of policy prior to this. Who has she shown you? Uh, herself to be to you. 800-288-WBAP. Lines wide open for the first time all night. 800-288-9227. In three minutes, more excerpts from her speech, more reaction from the pundits out there. And I'll get you some audio of Trump tonight uh, on the phone with Fox. That's already kind of been popping around on the, on the Twitter sphere. I'll be sharing some of that next uh, at uh, 48 after the hour. Chris Crock Show, News Talk 820 WBAP. Now on FM at 93.3. Chime in now. 800-288-9227. Yes, Kamala Harris talked about immigration. 
but excusing the situation of the status quo as being a function of one bill not getting allowed to pass by Trump is not going to be satisfying, not to independent voters, not for people who study the issue. Here's some of the headlines. The reinvention of Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris rushes to the center. Kamala Harris's nomination is a new day for Indian American representation. That's the Chicago Tribune. Rushes to the center. Is there any evidence that she's rushing to the center? We may hear it in this speech tonight, but at least up until now, it's only been statements from the administration. Well, not only that, the or statements the that we've heard have been from anonymous aides. Right. So, you know, these positions that she is saying to have shifted, we've not heard out of her mouth. So, you know, when it comes to these things like her ban on fracking and her support for uh, uh, bail for rioters and so on, um, whether she's repeating it all that, we don't know from her own words. Maybe she hasn't. Who knows? Anonymous AIDS? I'm sorry, that's pretty thin. And then you go to uh, NBC News. This is great. But again, we didn't hear a whole lot about how she would be different from a Biden administration. But again, we didn't hear a whole lot about how she would be different from a Biden administration. We didn't hear how she would uh, a whole lot about how she would be different than the Biden administration. She wouldn't. NBC News is truthful there. Okay, 800-288-WBAP is our number. 800-288-9227. Uh, what's your reaction to this speech? Uh, did you hear any new policy? What's new that she shared tonight? I didn't hear anything new. Um, did you hear anything different from the past four years? I didn't. This is a continuation of Biden. It's just with a new face. Uh, anything that would stop inflation? Anything about grocery prices or gas prices? Uh, nothing. But I have to ask you, how serious of a threat is she to Trump? She's a very serious threat because uh, as long as they can keep hiding your policies and she just tick- tickles your ears and uh, is a Barbie candidate, uh, unfortunately, I think there's a lot of ignorant people out there that will vote for that. It's pretty scary, but uh, there sure could be. Uh, 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227. James, Fort Worth, hello, WBAP. Hello. Hello, sir. I mean, I didn't think I was going to get through. I had to call you back three times because I kept losing. No worries. We got you, brother. And we got it. Yes, sir. Hey, look, retired veteran, Afghanistan, Iraq. I'll Thank you. Yard, Thank there. you. That's fine. That's fine. So you I served have. like you served in combat like uh, Tim Walls did. Roger. Yes, sir. Yeah. 82nd Airborne Division. Absolutely. Yeah. Tim served proudly in combat. He, he, he saw weapons of war. Did you know that Tim Walls, the vice president? Uh, yeah, he was. He scares me sometimes when I read his bio. It just scares me. To you death. know, you know, he's lying. He didn't go to war. Anyway. I know. He yeah. didn't go he to was war. in Italy. He do nothing. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. Yeah. He, go ahead. That, that's a joke. Yeah. But it, you know what? They, these Democrats regurgitate everything every four years. And the one topic they bring up is racism. The, the problem I see, and you, you, I'm going to listen to you because I really am concerned about what you have to say, how you feel about this. In Afghanistan, Iraq, what we did was control the, the frequencies, and we broadcast what we wanted them people to know. That's how Karzai got elected. We told them what we wanted them to know about Karzai, so they would elect this guy. I mean, Karzai, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we controlled the airwaves and gave them transistor radios, told them what station, turned it to it, and they put a mark on. So they, 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 we was the only thing they could listen to right. over in that area because we had control of the airwaves. But anyway... That's what you're getting here. Yes. Here's the one thing, Chris. He is the guy, and I love him to death, man. I think he's the best thing. But you got a myopic, self-centered president that if he ain't careful, he's going to throw this away. And the one thing I was talking to. You're talking about Trump. Yes. You're talking about Trump. Go ahead. Yeah. Roger. Yes, sir. Roger. I was talking to some black brothers of mine at work, and they said, look here, James, listen. Why in the world did this man choose another white? You got several people, and they named them, and I agree with them. You got Ben Carson and Tim Scott. Yeah, Tim Scott he should have picked. Yeah, I agree. He said out of his own mouth that that guy has done more for him than he did for himself. That's why he was a perfect vice presidential candidate. He'd be a bad presidential candidate, but a perfect vice presidential candidate. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the problems. And if he don't, just like you said earlier in one of these other callers, said if he gets on there and he acts like he's still on The Apprentice and he thinks he can fire everybody and purse his lips together Mm -hmm. and act like an egotistical person, 
we're in deep trouble. That's and yes, exactly she's right. She's a threat, and she will win. Good. Yeah, I agree with you. People need to realize that. They need to take her seriously. You're. A, thank you for your amazing call and your amazing uh, service. You're, it's an honor that you listen to me. You think that much of me, brother. I think a lot more brother. of you. Thank you. All right. Love you, brother. Take care. Thanks for your All service. Right. 